brilliant, as always. And uh, I was the closing act. Hmm. I got out of the milk can. I took a whole mouthful of water, you see, so that I could spit it out of my hand and throw it on my face and I'd be wet. I didn't want to be dry when I walked through the curtain, you see. And I'm sitting there on top of the can and I've got this mouthful of water and I hear a voice directly above me on the catwalk. <laughs> it's David Carverfield talking with a magician named Shimada, another very famous magician. And he says, I don't know, Shimada, that doesn't look too tough to me. And Shimada says, no, I'm going to get me one of those, David. I wonder how much they cost. And I, pff, I let the water out, of course, <laughs> and I jumped out the can. I said, I'll get you guys. And I got one of them years later, but that's another long story. <laughs> and I walked through the curtain, and I was still laughing. They uh -huh. thought it was coughing. <laughs> um, now, of course, you mentioned hanging over Niagara Falls. Mm -hmm. uh, you've done some other uh, very interesting things, uh, entombed in ice, buried alive, um, all kinds of things. Um, uh, a fellow by the name of David Blaine yep. ha has been making news in recent, mm -hmm. uh, well, past couple of years, mm -hmm. uh, doing some of these things. Um, do you know him? Have you worked oh, yeah. with him? Yeah. Um, uh, David and I were, were quite friendly at one time. He's gone to the dark side now. Mm. Yes, he's, uh, he's, a, he's a close friend of uh, Uri Geller, the spoon bender, uh, who, whose talents, I think, may be trickery, for all we know, rather than really supernatural forces that he gets from a flying saucer. Right. If you believe that, I got some swamp land in Florida you might like to invest in. But <laughs> nonetheless, uh, David Blaine, uh, I did give him some pointers on the frozen block of ice uh, thing that he did mm. on Broadway uh, because I originated that a good 30 years or so ago. Mm. I think I was the first one ever to do it. Yeah. Uh, you also, uh, I have to mention this, you also toured with Alice Cooper. Yes. Oh, yes. Um, I haven't seen Alice in a couple of years now. Mm. But yes, I chopped his head off every night with a with a guillotine, and you know it never worked, because the <laughs> next night he was right back again. <laughs> Alice is quite a character, and the, the whole group there, that was, a, that was a wonderful gig. I worked that for 90 days, hmm. and they brought in four and a half million dollars in 90 days, so it pays rather well. That was gross, mind you, hmm. but uh, it's gross to make that kind of money, too, <laughs> let me tell you. But uh, I, I got to be very friendly with Alice. Uh, Vincent Fournier from Phoenix, Arizona, hmm. and a really nice guy who doesn't take himself seriously at all. Have you seen the commercial that he's doing for, for one of the hotel chains where he skips rope with the kids? That's right. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he's a funny character, and he doesn't take himself too seriously. And that's the secret of the whole thing. He knows who he is and what he is, and he knows just how far he can go. Mm. And he's a great character. Mm. Well, I want to get back now to um, some of the things you've been focusing on in recent times. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, I, I must admit, I had the pleasure of seeing you uh, uh, give a lecture, uh, full house, appreciative audience, and I uh, want to talk about a couple of things that you mentioned uh, during your, your lecture. Oh, that was done for Da Vinci Days, by the way. We've got to plug up Da Vinci Days. That's yes. right, Da Vinci Days, uh, yes, so. down south in Corvallis, yep. held was, every, every uh, summer. Very honored to be represented there. So nice bunch of people. And you're the and keynote speaker, as a matter yes, of fact. Yes, I believe so. I was, yes. Uh, but you mentioned something very interesting, and uh, we have to talk about this. And it involves the U.S. Patent Office of all institutions. I'm so embarrassed over the U.S. Patent Office. There was a time, you know, when you had to have a working model of something in order to get it actually patented. But they didn't want to waste patents and just run into numbers. It didn't mean anything. But now you can patent any stupid thing. I asked on my webpage just last week in italics, ladies and gentlemen, is there anything that the U.S. Patent Office won't patent? I think the answer is no. I mean, the silly things, I pointed some of them out last night, and it goes on endlessly. Mm -hmm. They patent perpetual motion machines. They patent free energy machines that don't work. You can't get perpetual motion, and you can't get free energy. If you can, hey, you, you, you don't even have to patent things. Just do it, <laughs> and somebody around uh, from any place in the world, they'll just come running to your door, and you'll be carried on their shoulders and such. That would mm -hmm. be the greatest discovery of the age. Uh, almost as good as the discovery of, of sliced bread or something <laughs> like that. But uh, they patent any damn thing that comes along. It's astonishing. They have no uh, judgment in these matters. I don't know who the patent examiners are, but I'm sure they didn't get out of high school. Hmm. Because any student, any high school student, would have more intelligence about these things, in my opinion. Um, you mentioned a six-year-old uh, who had has yeah. a, holds a patent. Yeah. There's Tell a six-year-old boy who has a patent now, and his father is a patent attorney, so I guess it, he did it rather cheaply, mm. yeah. has a patent on the process of using a playground swing, which normally goes back and forth like this, right? And you're holding on mm. to, the, to the chains or the ropes or whatever, 
and he patented the process of making it go like this in this kind of a motion while you're going back and forth by pulling alternately on the supports as you're doing this. You could patent this. They gave him a patent and a patent number and he has the patent papers on it, mm. which technically means if you see someone doing that in the playground, he can run up and say, hey, you owe me a royalty. Mm. This is insanity. It's not a serious office anymore. It's a bunch of clowns. Mm. I, I'm embarrassed by it. I really am. Mm. Um, now, there's a lot of folks who are claiming to use science um, to fleece people. Um, and of course, there's also folks who honestly are sort of deluding themselves and they, they believe, they actually believe in yeah, that's uh, the some of these That's the largest majority, things. the honest people who are self-deluded. And uh, I want to talk about them a little bit. And sure. I'm, of course, I'm referring to, um, to dowsing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I have to admit, I, I didn't know anyone did that anymore. But apparently, oh, yeah. you know, I've gone out on the internet and uh, just typed in the word uh, dowsing. Oh, yeah. And, uh, hundreds and hundreds of references. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. And there's groups all over the country that, that mm -hmm. practice this. Um, uh, in fact, I printed something off that I found just incredible, a, a quote from a dowser. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, one of them says, we always douse the weather on our field trips. Uh, we ask, will it rain? Will it be cold? And apparently these, these sticks tell them, you know, yes or no. Um, uh, uh, someone else douses to uh, find out if somebody's going to win a football game. Um, uh, they say they can douse for anything from uh, finding lost children to finding water mm -hmm. to uh, mm -hmm. um, finding uh, precious metals. Yep, anything. And uh, people actually believe this? Oh yeah. The dowsers are the, the most, uh, uh, the saddest self-deluded group that I ever come upon. Now, you know that through the James Roundy Educational Foundation we have a million dollar prize. A million dollars is awardable to any person or persons who can provide evidence of any paranormal, occult, or supernatural event or power of any kind under proper observing conditions. That's simple enough. And uh, the people that we get coming for it, a good 80% of them are dowsers. Hmm. People who use the pendulum or the, the fork stick or the, the coat hanger wires that stick out and wave all over the place and such, they really think they've got the magical powers, that they can do this. Hmm. They can't. Now, we've, I've tested literally, this is not an exaggeration, thousands of them all over the world. In, uh, in Russia, in Albania, in uh, all over Australia and New Zealand, and in China and Japan, all through Europe, all the way through, and in the UK and Canada and the United States very, very frequently. Mm. And uh, none of the dowsers have ever been able to actually do what they say they can do. They think they can mm. because the sticks move, but they're moving themselves, the sticks themselves, unconsciously. It's what's called the idiomotor reaction and it's a very strong psychological force. The sticks move but they're actually moving them. If you photograph their hands you'll see they are moving them and they're not aware of it. That's the sad part about this. Mm -hmm. But they're by and large honest folks. I've only had two dowsers ever try to really fool me and I caught them like that. No trouble. Mm -hmm. Now you mentioned uh, you did test a dowser um, within the past couple of months yeah. uh, right in your offices. Mm -hmm. um, how did that go? What uh, he said he could find gold. He was particularly sensitive to gold. Mm. So he brought along what he thought were gold coins. They weren't. They were the Sacagawea, is that the name? Uh, the the gold-colored dollars. Mm. But they're made from manganese bronze. They're not gold. There's not a trace of gold in them. He thought they were gold. And I wasn't about to disabuse him of the thing because he showed me in open tests that his dowsing stick always descended when he crossed over uh, the, the gold that he thought was gold right there. And he had a gold nugget along with it. So... It was not a total loss. Mm. And uh, when it was open, when he knew where it was, and when we all knew where it was, the sticks always did the right thing. 